Hello, uh, welcome. My name is Chris Cheney and I'm an artist in Melbourne. And welcome to my video about the 100 painting challenge. So this challenge is, I've heard about it from other artists. Uh, I'm part of the Milan Mastery Program. So this is one of the things in that program, but I haven't gotten to that point yet, but I was kind of feeling like I wanted to just do a whole bunch of rapid fire experimentation. So I've taken a break from the Mastery Program just to do this. Um, so we paint 100 paintings in three days, and it's just little A5 paintings, and so that's about 33 a day. I've watched some other videos of some other artists doing it, um, and have come up with a plan. So usually, um, these paintings come out, they're just kind of like abstract paintings, and just sort of expressive, and then you kind of see the ways the materials react and you kind of just go down this rabbit hole of curiosity and, and maybe you come away with a few things that you like. Um, so for this challenge, I actually want to have work that I like, um, that I enjoy, that I might be able to sell. Um, so I'm you know, using high quality paper, um, 300 GSM paper. And one of the things that I've done is I've, so that the work over the course of the three days um, is kind of cohesive and to eliminate some of the decision making I have to do, I've come up with three different color palettes. So each day has its own color palette and it's essentially the same color palette but like one color is changed on each day. So I've done a few samples. Um, forgive me, these are, I, they're in my sketchbook and then I folded my um, sketchbook and essentially they stuck together in four. So, this was kind of some ideas. So these are the color palettes that I'm using, and the, I've kind of experimented with how I can sort of play with these together and, and overlay some of the colors. Um, so that's that. Uh, so, so the color palette's decided, so that shouldn't take too much mental energy. Um, and then the other thing is uh, that the, like I said, a lot of these paintings are just kind of abstracts. But for me, I like to do figures. So that's kind of the really time consuming part of my art making. And so to sort of get the figures in sort of shorthand, do it quickly, I've prepared uh, a few different stencils. So I've got four stencils and two lino cuts. Um, so I'll show you. So these are my two lino cuts and I've done some testing with them. And for this kind of thing, it needs to be a really light background, any kind of darkness in the background and you start to lose this imagery because it's so detailed. Um, and because like when you're doing the print, there's kind of a, you know, the way the ink sits on the paper or if there's blank spots and stuff, there's an interest in and in, in of itself. So sometimes the um, background competes a little bit too much. So then I've also created stencils. So this is one. And what I've done for maximum versatility, so this is kind of one stencil, right? So you've got the black. Um, so this is kind of the darker layer. So whatever the darker color is. That's what you're going to use this stencil for. Um, and then I've got this one and this one. So I can either sort of spray around the figure or I can spray in the figure. And then I can layer my other sort of more pattern geometric shape stencils um, sort of over the top of this. Um, so, so those are the stencils. They're really versatile. And you've got this sort of three set of three here. There's just a million different ways to combine that. Um, the other thing is I'm setting a timer. So uh, when I do my artworks, it's, you know, the, the first layers are really fast. And then I find like the last 10 to 20% takes about 50% of the time. So I'm setting a timer so that I know, okay, like I have this many, you know, I've got two hours to do just like the background layer and then three hours to kind of do the mid layers and then five hours to do the, uh, final details, uh, which is about 10 hours a day. And given the time it is right now and what I, when I have to be finished, because I've got stuff to do tonight, um, I'm not gonna have 10 hours. So we'll see how this goes. We'll see how many paintings I get done um, in the time I have. So that was one thing. And then the other thing is that instead of working on each A5 painting individually, I'm gonna start, you know, just doing backgrounds and mid layers and start working on A3, A3 sheets of paper. And then as I sort of get closer to the end, I'll sort of cut those down into A5s and sort of each um, piece, you know, th then that kind of ties in the background and some of the mid layers and the colors together 
but then each piece, you know, gets finished off with its own sort of character um, and design. And the other thing that I've done is I've already kind of brainstormed different ideas for like how to do the backgrounds, how to do the mid layers, um, using sort of the techniques and mark making that I like to use. So that if I do get stuck, if I'm lost, I can just kind of, it's, it's all on flashcards, so I can just kind of pick a random card and then like that's what we're going to be doing. So, so I've tried to make this as easy and streamlined as possible because 100 paintings is really a lot to get through. Um, in three days, especially if you want them to be nice and good and cohesive and finished. So wish me luck and let's see how this goes. All right. Okay, so here I am uh, putting down some base layers, just doing a few sort of flat colors and then color gradients um, using sort of the colors for that day. And then here we've got some collage elements um, that will come out just pretty abstract. Um, and I'm using, so today I'm using the pinks and oranges um, and then black and white and silver. I don't usually use color gradients of my work, um, but I thought it would be pretty cool to do sort of a color gradient background, but then um, also like color gradient in um, stencils, uh, either like inverse color gradient in the stencils or, you know, sort of the, in the complementary colors to really make them pop. Uh, doing a little bit of kind of washy, washy stuff, and then rollers um, and paint splatters, just all sorts of experimental stuff. And uh, I love this hot pink paint. This is a really fluid, uh, high flow acrylic hot pink from uh, Global Colors, and I just love it. And this purple is actually uh, mica. It's actually a dry, um, shimmery pigment. Um, that comes in purple and it shows up really purple against the black and then here we are doing some more stencils so I'm working a lot of gradient stencils here um, and um, some of these I've already cut down I love this alphabet stencil it's quite good and I quite like doing it backwards um, so that you're not necessarily reading the letters um, layering stencils on top of each other sort of giving kind of a shadow effect and washes, um, that's sort of bringing out the texture. I had pressed some bubble wrap into some heavy gloss gel, which sort of gives the, the piece of bubble wrap texture. And then when you put a wash on, um, the bubble wrap shows up a little bit more. And this was, I did a sort of white on white paint and then did a wash over. So the white kind of acts as a resist. So this is a uh, black paint with the purple shimmery mica on. And then I did uh, black spray paint over the top. So you kind of get this black and purple leopard print, which is pretty cool. And then these are a selection of some of the backgrounds, how they turned out. And this, this background is a little bit more involved, so this is a lot of geometric shapes. Um, I just kind of do these in random shapes and sizes, and then fill in the just fill in the color bars with doodles. It's much easier to do doodles. Um, if you're doing stencils, then I kind of have to block it off. It's a lot of blocking off and then just spraying a little part and then remasking it. So it's a lot of effort to do these kinds of backgrounds. So you want to make it worth it. And I often do, I'll do kind of a wash on the paper in like a light color and then I'll spray paint these designs or doodle them in white and then I'll do another wash so it's kind of in, in that same color so then it kind of ends up being like a bit of a two-tone um, you know really low contrast background so it's um, you've got some background imagery but it's it's not sort of commanding your attention it's just in there and these are some more freehand spray paints and now we start putting in the figures um, so starting with those stencils, um, putting in kind of the light parts, put in the, the light parts of the figures. And this is, I don't know what that didn't turn out very well, to be honest. These are cool backgrounds, needed some hot pink. <laughs> um, this is quite a light background, so I'll probably use this for the lino uh, prints. Um, this is, uh, yeah, white silver and black on sort of white adding in just adding in some mark making some doodles so that they get embedded in between the layers and they're not just kind of on the top 
right at the end. Um, I'm loving this orange and pink um, look. I don't usually use orange, but I quite I like the way how I like how garish and sort of how they kind of clash against each other. Um, it looks really good with like the black as well. Putting I've got a little name stencil that I put in there too. So if anyone wants a painting with my name on it, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> um, yep, and this I don't know how much this stencil turned out. It was like a bit of a weird image to begin with, and then when it translated into a stencil, sort of out of context. I'm not sure how well that one worked. Um, and it was also really hard to line up because it's this sort of blobby round shape. Once I had done the first layer of stencil, when I went over it with the black sort of stencil, I had a really hard time like trying to get it in the right same position. And then while I was waiting some, for some of the stencils to dry, I moved on to the linos. And this one's really fun to do. It's pretty simple. Just put that one in the corner and then you can kind of play around um, with the rest of the print. This one didn't quite work out so well just because of the way she's cropped and the size. If she had been an A5 size and then you put her right smack in the middle of paper, that would have been perfect. And more. So I'm working six at a time. So I'm using the same kind of stencil design and I'm working on six pieces of paper at a time so I can say this is a design and this is what the background looks like so I can be really in tune with like what does this piece need next and I'm kind of thinking uh, about the all these pieces in layers and with an idea of sort of where I'm going with them it's not just like one step at a time and I have no idea what the trajectory is I kind of know what I want and then I work backwards from there and this is sort of laying layering the pattern stencils over the um, in with the other stencils <laughs> stencil 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 um, <laughs> it's um, it's a lot of intuitive uh, just responding to, to sort of what's happening in the moment okay I'm back um, it's the end of day one and um, I'm quite happy with how they all turned out. Um, so I was totally able to, I mean, everything kind of went as expected, um, except I have counted them and I thought I was making 33 um, because when I, you know, I was sort of calculating how many A3 sheets do I need to make 33 A5 and somehow I made 38. So I used a calculator and everything. So I don't know how I've done that, but that's good because then I just have extra. Um, so everything went, according to plan except um, so I made the backgrounds and then you know kind of made a judgment call about when to cut them down into a5 sheets and once they were all a5s uh, and had the backgrounds in then I sort of stacked them up into six um, different piles and for each sort of different stencil design that I had um, and then I would take the pile and sort of work with that one stencil design um, and, and sort of make, you know, six or seven, or whatever, uh, of that design. And that, that's what I did the first time. And then the second time, because it takes a little while for the spray paint to dry and set, I thought, oh, I'll take one piece, from, one paper from each pile and then work on all the different stencils at once so that they can kind of dry. But um, that just didn't work. So working one sort of design idea at a time really helps because I think that the work, when I was working across all four different stencils that I had, I wasn't, I don't think they came out as well because um, I wasn't as focused on each one. I didn't necessarily have like the final vision of how I was going to layer <clears throat> layer it and, and stack it up. I was just kind of like just pick, picking random uh, stencils um, and effects. So I'll show you what they, how they turn out. Okay, so this is um, how they turn out. So this was the color scheme. Um, and then they all kind of have that sort of vibe. Um, so you can see here, like, uh, this, uh, these two were cut from the same A3 piece of paper. 
um, and, and then I kind of differentiated them. Some of them I did uh, A3, and then I would sort of cut it down to A4, and then sort of work a little bit more on the background so that each one was a little bit more individual. Um, so I think these two were kind of the same. Oh no, this one, and this one was off the same background. Yeah, so they really do kind of get, um, become little unique works of art once you put in all the different layers. This stencil wasn't as versatile as the rest of them because it was only one stencil. Um, and also kind of the sizing of it wasn't specifically designed for this project. So um, here we go, these ones. And then these are the lino, these two girls are the lino uh, cuts. And so I had to sort of save anything that I had like a really light background on and didn't have any black in, then I would use, um, put it for the lino cuts. And then I did have a stencil that was my name. So I kind of put that in a little bit cheeky. So yeah, so this is day one and I quite like it. This one's really fun. Yeah, this one's quite fun. But these background, well, this background took quite a bit of effort, um, but this one was really quick. So I might, you know, use that tomorrow when I do day two. So anyway, that's that. Stay tuned for day two. Okay, it's day two of the 100 painting challenge. Um, everything is went pretty well yesterday. So today's color palette is this one. So it's white, black, silver, blues, and pinks. And this kind of got a little bit messed up because the spray paint was still sticky <laughs> when I closed my sketchbook. So here we go. We'll start on the backgrounds, um, cut the larger pieces up into smaller pieces, and then put in the figures. Okay, so here we are again um, doing the background layers. So today it's pinks and blues, uh, which are mixing to make a purple. So, um, so you get three colors for the price of two. Um, so a lot of um, washy stuff. I like to put, if I'm going to do sort of blended gradient backgrounds, I like to put water down on the paper first uh, to help the colors flow. I think my colors are perhaps a little bit thick and goopy and sometimes they don't flow so well uh, with the, I've got Matisse structure paints. Um, and this is the, that sort of background pattern again, uh, a lot of masking off, um, doing it on an A3 size so I can get more um, from it. And then here I'm putting washes over it to sort of um, make the whites kind of to give it less contrast so that the whites kind of blend in uh, with the background so it sort of it pushes further even even further into the background um, when you do it and more stencils I quite like I've been doing um, sort of silver on white and white on white or like white spray paint on like pearlescent white um, acrylic paint and that sort of gives like a really subtle pattern that you can only really see close up so it gives you a really interesting detail to appreciate uh, when you see the works in person and when you really take the time to have a look at them um, and some of these I'm starting to put the figures in and using my little uh, name stencil as well um, this one that one was the this one with the cell phone was a little bit of a difficult stencil because it wasn't made for this project. So it wasn't quite the right size or dimensions. And when you put it on the paper, um, it was kind of like, oh, okay, how do I crop this? Do I want to fit the cell phone in or is her hand kind of going off the page? And these are more. This day was a little bit, I was kind of running out of ideas. I didn't quite know what to do with um, all these different stencils, I wasn't really feeling it. That, uh, so I quite like this. <laughs> the light pink and like the dark pink together. That's another sort of clashing kind of color that I quite like. I developed a fondness for it. Um, and these little heart stencils as well. They're kind of like cutesy and girly. And here we are doing some lino printing. You can't really see the design, so I didn't put too much of that in. Um, and we're back to stencils. 
I really enjoy doing this. I don't normally work a lot. Like when I do my regular work, I'll use sort of the pattern stencils and some of them are store-bought and some of them are actually hand cut. And sometimes I'll get a store-bought stencil, but I also want the inverse, like I want the pattern, but inverted. So then I have to hand cut a, st a stencil that's the inverse pattern. Um, and then I can sort of lay those two stencils on top of each other, uh, which is quite fun. Gives some really interesting effects. Um, so um, I have a few hand cut stencils. I think as I go along, I'll sort of make more and then sort of have more of a, a library of hand cut stencils to refer to. Okay, so it's the end of day two um, of the 100 painting challenge and I've just finished it and so this is um, some of the pieces. I think today, today went a little bit faster than yesterday. Um, I think I was sort of quicker to paint and I wasn't spending as long sort of considering each painting, um, which was kind of positive, but also I'm perhaps not as pleased with the paintings, like the way they've come out and I'm not sure if it's the color scheme or they're just not like as detailed as I kind of wanted them to be. Um, or maybe they're just a bit repetitive, maybe I ran out of ideas towards the end, I think. Um, but I'll sort of go over them with like mark making tools, so some Posca pens and oil pastels and uh, maybe charcoal and, and sort of wax pencils and stuff like that, just to put in some extra doodles um, and marks, I think, to add a little bit more interest. But I'll show you what the paintings uh, look okay, like from so today. So are some of the paintings, these are the um, lino cut prints on the light background. Um, so yeah, these are fun. And then all these guys. So yeah, some of these colors didn't quite come together as much as I would like, or maybe they're a little bit too girly with the pink and the blue. Um, so these are the paintings today. This one was a little bit, there's too much dark going on in the face, so it doesn't really read that well. And I quite like this background, but again, it's a little bit dark, so the, the dark parts don't read so well. So there we have it. That's the painting from day two. Okay, hello, morning. Uh, welcome to day three of my 100 painting challenge. So this is the last day. Um, I've got a new color palette. So it's blues and purples um, and white and black and silver. Um, I woke up this morning with some more ideas for like backgrounds and stuff and probably forgot most of them, but I've managed to write some of them down. So hopefully I will remember to do those and those will come out really cool. Let's just get started. Okay, so going back to putting in the backgrounds, I think today I did a lot more just like washy stuff and solid colors. I didn't do a whole lot of different gradient patterns. Um, and again, I did sort of a big uh, sheet of that sort of geometric design with scribbles and um, spray paints. And I think if I did a lot of those, then I might actually just make stencils. <laughs> that, like if I wanted to do, yeah, just like have some shapes and then have um, some patterns sort of in those shapes and then I could, maybe it could be a stencil that would actually repeat itself. Um, that would be a pretty cool idea. And then I could use it on canvases or when I'm working on paper. Um, and so these are kind of, I think for these ones, on this day, I started to just have them on, you know, one big A3 sheet, but then divvy them up using different stencils, or like using the same stencil, but different colors on each half of the sheet, um, rather than sort of cutting it up and then doing it just seemed a little bit faster. So that was a really light background with a little blue wash. And then I did um, stems, like a silver pattern over the top and it was really shiny silver. So again, it's that sort of low contrast, light on light uh, background. And more washes, paint scrapes. Love a good paint scrape. Um, that's kind of something that I more commonly use in my work. Takes a bit for it to dry. Um, I think with this challenge, you have to think a little bit strategically about sort of um, how long do things take to dry, and and you know, do you, and how long does it take to do something? How much do you want it? How much time do you want to invest uh, for the effect that you're going to get? 
is it worth it? And I think these backgrounds um, with the different geometric shapes were worth it. Um, those were probably the backgrounds that took me the longest to do because of all the masking off. I have to. I think I did about three goes, sort of mask off and then spray and mask off and spray about three different times. And then these are sort of two different backgrounds. And they got kind of, I think they're, they used the same paint on both of them, but they got different treatments here. Didn't love that leopard print um, painting, but I didn't know what else to do. <laughs> trying to like add more interest. Um, trying some sponge painting. I think I wanted that purple, but I didn't have a purple spray paint, so I tried sponge painting. Didn't work great. Kind of bled under the stencil. It was a little bit watery. Um, so when you're doing that kind of thing, you, what you want to do essentially is dry brush. You want to use a really dry paint and then dry brush onto the stencil. And then I started getting into, for the light portions of the stencils, I was really enjoying doing sort of a gradient, a light gradient. And I got a new blue... Um, new blue spray paint for this. And I wanted it more teal, but it wasn't, didn't come out very teal. It was just really like a, a solid blue. <laughs> so it didn't, wasn't quite working with the colors that I wanted to. So I wasn't, um, I think I was trying to blend that, that blue spray paint with some other stuff to try and sort of mellow it out. Okay, so it's the end of day three. Um, I've finished 100 paintings. I think I've actually done about 110, but I figured there would be some attrition. Um, so let's have a look at this last day. Okay, so the color scheme, um, this was the color scheme of blue and purple with silver and black. Um, this is what we've got here. Um, and then all these. So I think what I'm going to do is doodle doodle on them, do some drawings, do some mark making, um, and finish these up and just make them, each one, you know, even more unique. And we'll see what they look okay, like. Okay, I'm finished. And this is what 100 paintings looks like. Ooh, okay, it's pretty heavy. So um, we'll lay these all out and let's see what we got. Okay, so here it is. Um, this is almost all of the 100 paintings. This is 97 paintings. I couldn't quite put them all um, up on here. And I quite like, so I think I found that um, on the first day I had planned, done a lot of planning, um, and I had a lot of different ideas for sort of how I wanted to do the different backgrounds and layering. Um, and then on the second day, I kind of, I was, I don't know, I was kind of a little bit bored and was kind of, I didn't feel like I had that many ideas um, sort of for what I want to do. And then on the third day, got my inspiration back. And um, by the time I finished it, you know, I still had lots of other ideas for how to sort of mix and match and combine my stencils and colors and stuff. Um, what else? I, I think these all look quite cool as, you know, uh, one big collection. So they're pretty fun. Um, this was definitely my favorite. Um, stencil to work with. I quite like this. And um, this is my favorite sort of lino, lino print. I would say that uh, one thing I noticed with the lino printing, so there's this one, um, the, I just got like a beginner kit because I don't really know much about lino printing. Um, and the ink must be oil-based or something because on certain uh, pieces, like um, the, the ink still hasn't dried and it's actually been, to be honest, it's been three weeks <laughs> since I finished this project. I just haven't done the video yet because I was waiting for the ink to dry. Um, but kind of where it's gone over the spray paint, you can see it's, well you can't see, but I can see it's still actually wet where it's over the spray paint, but where it's just over the acrylic paint or just paper, um, it's dry. So I'm not sure what, why that is or how that works, but maybe I just printed it really thick, but it's kind of weird. Um, so I'm still waiting for some of these to dry. That's why there's only about 90 on uh, pieces up here. Um, definitely having the uh, three stencils. Um, so there's sort of a cutout of the light area and then sort of the light area itself so you can stencil around it. 
um, and then having the black stencil really um, gave a lot of flexibility, and then I was able to sort of flip them over um, and use the stencil either way, whereas with the lino printing it wasn't quite as flexible. I couldn't reverse the lino prints. I could flip them upside down, but, um, and also I think the, the kit that I got, this was sort of the size of the printing block, so it wasn't actually an A5 size. So um, I really enjoyed this, and there's been a lot of ideas that have come out of it. Uh, a lot of playing around with color and um, patterns and stencil work. So I think, yeah, I'd love to do this again maybe next year and make four or five new stencils to work with, um, specifically designed for this project, and um, see how the work evolves. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope you try the 100, day, 100 painting project um, for yourself, and I'd love to see what you make.